Hi guys, it's Judy here. Welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of plant chores. They're piling at the moment one on top of the other. I've got so much to do, so I'm going to be doing them together with you guys today. videos I'm talking about the practical care tips of plants but I also wanted to practice what I preach and show you guys the nitty-gritty the, the get your hands dirty day-to-day -day things there's a lot of plants here that need actual care like they need attention because they're not doing so well and there's other few little plant chores that just need to be done because they it's just the way it goes and there is also a plant here that I'm repotting as part of my repotting service I've got a client she wants me to repot her plant and give it a little bit of TLC so that's what I'm gonna be doing right now I'm gonna start with this plant this is the one that has been entrusted to my care to repot so a client has dropped this off to me and she just needs a bit of care for her Monstera adansonia. The first thing that's probably the biggest issue with this plant is why it's declined is the soil quality. The soil quality isn't great so I'm going to be changing that and I'm also going to be downsizing this vine into a 16 inch, 16 cm pot. This is a 19 cm I think, I'm going to downsize it. It's not by any means in, um, root bound or anything which is why I'm going to be re-potting it into a smaller size pot. I also said to her I could take the vine off the pole and run it around the top of the pot to make it f look full and lush but she said she wanted to keep it on the pole but what I am going to do is stake it, take all of this and move it down so it's a lot bushier down the bottom and as it gets longer she can keep staking it up the pole. So I'm just gonna do that with this plant and I suppose I will just get started. So I don't know uh, what kind of care she's been giving this plant. I should have asked her what kind of uh, situation it's been in, like light situation and all that. But from the looks of this plant, I think the, the biggest thing that has been the issue with it is the fact that it is sitting in soil that's not very good quality. Also on top of that, oh, she was asking me about watering requirements. Um, I don't think that the plant itself was getting thoroughly watered or properly watered as it should be when in the shower. I think she was told that it only needs a little bit of water at the time. At a time. So the thing with watering is I think a lot of people get stuck with watering. So people think, oh, you shouldn't overwater your plant. So they only give them a little bit at a time. But really when it comes to watering, the important thing to remember is not so much the amount of water that you give a plant as it is the frequency of watering. I water my plants whenever the soil is dry and whether that's in a week or two weeks or three weeks depending on the weather, depending on how much light your plant is getting, I always do it when the soil is dry with an exception of a few plants that like their soil to not dry up too much. I think that's something that she just needed explained to her um, with a plant and that's what my videos are for, that's what I'm here for. My aim is to equip plant lovers with the information and the care and the advice that they need in order to help their plant babies thrive. So there's a, there's also a, another issue with this plant. Uh, this lady was given this plant. She said uh, it was given to her and I, I think it was given to her already like this. But the plant itself is actually stapled to the pole which I feel is just not great for plants. Like you shouldn't be stapling plants to anything. They they need to grow free. Like if you if you want to tie them up a pole or something, use a, a, a twine, a hemp string or something. Don't use freaking maple, uh, maple, metal staples. That's metal and plants, no, not good. So it just, I don't know. It looks like the growers that grew this plant, not very good quality, not very good quality altogether. From the staples to the soil, it's just screaming red flags to me <laughs> altogether. So what I'm currently doing is just pulling out all those staples. I don't have a pair of pliers, otherwise I would be doing it with a pair of pliers. So don't at me in the comments. I know this would be so much easier with a pair of pliers. <laughs> Trying to not damage the plant too. Alright, there are so many staples in this. I'm gonna see if I can find a pair of pliers somewhere. Somehow. I'll be back. I know I got one somewhere. Alright, I found a pair of wire cutters. I don't know if they're going to be any more helpful than the pair of scissors was, but at least I'll be able to grab the um, grab the staple and pull it out like that. There we go. It didn't actually cut it, so that's good. It must be blunt as. 
So I'm almost done pulling all those staples out. So I'm also going to be taking off the sadder looking leaves. This poor thing just really needs some TLC. This leaf here has completely like rotted off as well, I think. I don't know what, um, what the care has been of this plant, but it looks like that it might have been misted or something. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so now that I've taken all those staples out, I am going to try and pull this out of the pot. All right, so as you can see here, it's completely like, it's not a very healthy plant at all. So it doesn't have much of a root system here. It's got a plant plug, which is not the issue. I think it's a whole myriad of other uh, things that has caused this plant to decline. Um, but I'm gonna take off that bit of plastic around the roots anyway, just to give it a little bit of extra help. The, the other stem was already broken off at the base, so I'm gonna replant that one into the pot itself, just so, I don't know, it might grow again. I don't know if there might still be a bit of growth at this, at the base of this stem, but this one's already like completely broken off. So I hope I just haven't completely ruined this lovely lady's plant, but it was already in pretty dire condition when it got to me. <laughs> so I'm just hoping for the best. I'm gonna pop some of my soil mix into this pot. And I'm gonna put this steak back in because this lady wanted to keep the steak and that's okay. I'm just gonna make sure I pull all those staples out. All right, so I'm gonna put that steak back in. And as you can see for the plant, that's all the root system that was there. So I'm just gonna put that back in and backfill the rest of that pot. All right, there we go. So there's this tiny little stem. I think this is what the original plant was growing from but it's quite desiccated because it's it's really dry. I don't think those roots are gonna do anything, but just in case something happens from that node there, I'm gonna cut that stem back and just plant that back in there, just in case something grows. Now to give a bit of care for the rest of the plant. Now to look at the rest of the plant. So this has been wound pretty tightly without any care for the vine itself, I feel like. So what I'm gonna do is just unwind the whole thing and then rewind it around the base of the stake to make it look a lot fuller from the bottom. And then I told this lady that as it grows longer, she can just keep tying it up the pole. But for now, we're going to wind the whole thing around the base of the pole so it looks bushy around the bottom. There is one more staple back here, which is well and truly um, choked the vine that it's got trapped in there. I hate when growers use staples. It's not right. So it's pretty good. Like this plant has some decent aerial roots on it. So maybe that's a good sign, but I feel like it hasn't had like a proper watering for a while. So I'm gonna bring some of those stems just a bit closer to the base of the pot. And then just wind it up again from here. But not try and get it to actually cover the whole entire pole. There's a stem that's broken off there, so can't really do much about that, unfortunately. So I'm gonna grab a bit of twine here. Oops. And fortunately, there is like a nice, decent vine growing on it. So that's gonna help it look a little bit more full at the base there. Unfortunately, the, the reality is sometimes there are plants out there that are not uh, great quality already when you buy them. And this is no fault of anyone. Like, this is not that lady's fault, obviously. She was given this plant and sometimes it's just lack of, of knowledge of how to care for a plant that compounds the lack of health, overall health for the plant. 
And often, if a plant is already healthy and good quality when you buy it, often it probably shouldn't decline as much as this one has. Well, I don't know how long this lady has had this one, but yeah, it's, it's not doing too good. <laughs> so I'm hoping maybe this little care session will do wonders for it. I hope so anyway. So there we go. I think that's the most I'll be able to do for this poor little thing right now. And I think it's just a matter of time. So now I'm gonna give it a really, really good shower. Give it a really good, super good shower down. Spray over with neem oil. I'm gonna feed it as well. Give it a bit of a boost. And um, yeah, fingers crossed that this plant does well for my client, hopefully. <laughs> I'm gonna put her tag back on the plant there in the pot. There we go. Fingers crossed that one does okay. <laughs> the next thing that I want to do is actually take these cuttings out of this sphagnum moss. So these are the rare plant cuttings that I was given by a friend of mine. I just made a video about it if you wanna see that whole collection video. I'll leave it in the info card up here and in the description box down below. But after my friend gave me these cuttings, I actually put them in sphagnum moss and they are not doing well. So I think I had a really bad batch of sphagnum moss. I just checked them the other day, as you can see here, the stems have rotted. So I'm gonna take them out and cut off that rot and hopefully, hopefully the rot doesn't set into the node. There's still a node connected there. So I'm just gonna put them in water. That way um, the nodes are not hidden. I can see what is going on. And I just feel really bad that these have rotted. I don't know, I don't know what happened. I. I feel like it was a really super bad batch of sphagnum moss is what caused these nodes to rot, these roots to rot. So I wanted to take them out as quickly as possible and try and save my precious cuttings that my friend so kindly gave me and are, that are actually worth like so much money. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of panicked when I saw that the roots had started going brown and soggy and that sphagnum moss was just, yeah, really bad quality. What actually happened was I bought this sphagnum moss off, I think it was eBay, it was some cheap China seller um, and yeah, that you get what you pay for. Goes to show, you get what you pay for. So I'm just gonna actually take them out of that sphagnum moss and throw that moss away and just leave these cuttings in water that way I can actually see and keep an eye on those stems and hope for the best. Hope that it turns it around instead of keeping them sitting in this sphagnum moss. So I just feel, it makes me feel sick to think that they've been actually rotting slowly in that sphagnum moss. Like these roots were beautiful when I, when I got this and now they're just like brown and rotting. Like the roots are just breaking off like this. It makes me feel so sad, so, so sad that I, I mean like I did this. It makes me feel awful really. Hopefully these roots aren't too far gone. There's still a bit of life in them. It's just the end bits that have gone a bit soggy. So I'm gonna try and cut off those rotten bits, try and save the rest of that cutting. At least the rot hasn't actually set in the actual node of the, of the stem itself. There's another one there. So the rot in this one hasn't quite set in so much so that is good there's just a bit of rot on that stem there which I will on that root there which I will cut off <sighs> I feel awful I, I kind of tweaked to that something was happening when I opened my humidity box the other day and the air that came out of it was like it stank it was actually smelly so I thought oh something's going on there so I checked I checked one of the cups with the roots and yeah it i saw i pulled the one out and the rock the and the stems were mushy and brown and i thought now nah, that's got to come out it is not good enough bye bye to that sphagnum moss not using that one again ever they can sit in some fresh water for now until their roots have formed and developed and then i'll pop them into some soil hopefully my brandy's okay yes the brandy's all right i'm so happy the brandy's all right Phew. I'm so sorry I did that to you. All right, let's see if this piper is okay. The piper was very um, delicate, so I don't know if the piper is okay. All right, so the piper is not doing too bad. Some of those aerial roots have rotted, so I'm just gonna cut them off. What I think I might do with these ones is actually pop them into a, a different humidity box in some better quality sphagnum moss that I have. Let's see if these begonias are all right. Yeah, nah, the begonias are actually fine. <laughs> Told you they were like weeds. 
It'll grow any, in any condition, even in really shitty sphagnum moss. That's okay, it can come out anyway. I don't want to risk these ones rotting and dying too. It's actually grown some new roots, which is interesting. Ah, those can stay in water. All right, one more. This is Monstera Siltipicana. Monstera El Salvador, I should say. So that is a node. That one just completely fell off. And yeah, these ones are okay. These cuttings are all right. These ones didn't rot or anything, but they can stay out of that sphagnum moss anyway. Just put it in this glass of water. All right, so that's the that on that. I'm glad I caught it before it was too far gone and before all those nodes had completely had completely rotted and disintegrated. I'm gonna keep an eye on this in the next few days and um, and change the water. I'll probably need to change the water and um, just hope for the best. Hopefully that rot hasn't set in to the rest of that stem because if it has, I will cry. I will actually cry. <laughs> All right, let's put that aside. I've got one more. I've got one more job to do from the plants that were given to me. So one of this is a micans and the other one is a, it's a melanocrysum. I'm not entirely sure, but they both were planted in one pot here and my friend said to separate them. Otherwise, it would be really hard to separate the roots because as you can see, they've probably already joined together. Yeah, they've actually joined together. Just checking to see if there's any like pests or thrips or anything within this moss. That's why I'm just looking really closely. A few moments later. Well, I'm glad I took a closer look because this is full of thrips. <sighs> My anxiety levels just rose like 200% because I've got this out and I haven't had thrips yet in these plants, so um, I need to do something about this. First of all, I'm gonna get rid of this and throw this out completely. All right, so what I'm gonna do with this is, so I looked into this root ball, uh, sphagnum moss, and the roots of the plant itself, and the whole thing is actually, it looks like it's swarming with thrips. Now, I kind of wanted to just throw this, the whole thing away, but the, pl the leaves themselves don't look like they are actually affected too much by the thrips themselves. So maybe they've only just started breeding in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soak the whole root ball in some water and this one has, I'm gonna put pyrethrum, pyrethrum insect, insect pest killer. I'm gonna put some of that in the water there. Just give that a bit of a twirl. I don't wanna put my hands in there. A uh, bit of a twirl. Now, this is a pest killer. I've seen this be really effective on spider mites, aphids, and fungus gnats. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, like I said, I've never dealt with thrips before in my collection, and I really don't wanna start now. So I'm just gonna soak that whole root ball in that solution, and just hope that that does the trick, because I really, really do not wanna have to deal with thrips in my entire collection, because once they are in there, they are in there. They actually breed in the soil, lay their eggs in the soil, and I re I've used soil for all my plants, and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to have to change all the soil and all my plants. Goodness me, imagine if I had to do that. I would probably cry, to be honest. That's had a really good soak. Hopefully that does the trick. I will check back in this plant with a few days, but I'm also, I need to wash that cup, actually. I'm gonna wash this cup. I don't want to put it back in the cup that had the, yeah, I don't know. All right, now I'm gonna take that out. Hopefully that does the trick. And I'm probably going to repeat this process again in like a week or so. Now I'm gonna spray it all down with Vitality Plus. This is a plant foliar spray, which is used for pest management, pest, I can't speak today. Pest management, pest prevention. You can apply it directly to the leaves. So I'm gonna spray this on all parts of this plant as well. Those thrips are actually really small. They're so hard to spot on a plant. So when you check over your plants, it's really important to check over your plants regularly. Make sure that you're on top of your pest prevention management. Like, it's so important. Once they're in there, once they've taken a hold, you gotta keep an eye on them. Now, because these plants were kept in the same box, as this one, this thing was. I'm gonna spray these down as well. And I'm also going to spray down the inside of that box and any plants that are still left in that box that weren't sitting in 
that shitty sphagnum moss. My friends told me that Vitality Plus is really, really effective in managing pests. So that's what I'm using for these ones. They used this when they had a thrip infestation on their plants and they said it worked really well. So that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna keep an eye on these. I'm gonna leave them out because I'm gonna clean, clean out that box before I put them back in there. Don't know about this though. I don't know if I'm gonna put it back in there. I might quarantine this. I'll put it in something. I'll put it in something else all on its own. So I'll put that aside for now. And I wanna clean this all down so that anything, any other plant jobs I do here, I'm not gonna to have to worry about any pests, any thrips crawling around here before I get on to some of my other jobs. So guys, this is the reality of plant care. This is the unglamorous side of plant care. If you have a lot of plants, this is some of the management jobs that you're gonna have to think about and taking care of pests is one of them. It's not all fun and games and brand new leaves and stuff. Sometimes you have to do the dirty work like this. <laughs> and sometimes things don't go well, like that sphagnum moss, you know? It's just the reality, just the reality of plant care. So I'm gonna clean this up, then I'm gonna get on to that next job. All right, I've calmed myself down now. Hey guys, so future editing Judy here. I was just editing this video for t upload tomorrow and I just realized that I do need to update you on those little insects that I saw in the sphagnum moss. I was freaking out and the next day I went to work and told my friend who gave me these plants and told him that I found thrips in the sphagnum moss and he asked me to describe them to him and he said I'm pretty sure that they are actually springtail insects which are harmless and are things that crawl around in sphagnum or some soil or things like that but they're harmless to the plant and so I was freaking out about all of that for nothing but if they were indeed thrips I would have been freaking out for some really good reason anyway all's well that ends well uh, I think they were springtails but after the treatment that I did with them, they're well and truly not around in the plant anymore. So that's all right. So uh, this video really was just a little showing you the real deal and the reality of plant parenting and the freakouts that go hand in hand along with it when you find pests in your plant. So which is why it's really important for pest management. Keep on top of it. Don't let it get away from you or get out of hand. Uh, get on top of pest management guys because once it's out of hand, it's out of hand, which is why I was freaking out so much because I never actually dealt with thrips before and that's the whole reason for my freak out. So yeah, I just wanted to update you guys. They weren't thrips, they were springtails and I did a bit of research on them and they're, they're fine. So yeah, next time I know what to do. <laughs> I've had a couple wines, so I'm not speaking very fluently right now. Anyway. That was just a little edit that I needed to put in there <laughs> before I put this video out. <laughs> I was feeling a little bit anxious and worried <laughs> that I found thrips because I'd heard horror stories about having thrips and I've never actually dealt with thrips before. I have spider mites, mealybugs, uh, fungus gnats, all of those, but never thrips. So this is my first experience with them. I know that they can be managed if you get on top of it quickly, which is why I just I I just went on, I just turned off the camera because I was too stressed to actually deal with it on camera. But I went and cleaned out the box. I took out all the cups that had sphagnum moss. I separated the ones that came with sphagnum moss, not the ones that I put in the cups. So I've sorted that situation and I've calmed myself down and now I'm gonna repot a couple syngoniums. <laughs> okay, so here I have two pink neon neon syngoniums. One is in a terracotta pot. This is a pot that I painted myself. And the other is in a nursery pot. And I feel like neither of them are doing very well at the moment. This one stays too wet for too long. And this one dries out way too quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both these plants, combine them together in one pot with some fresh soil. I'm gonna be keeping them in this nursery pot because this one isn't actually root bound yet as you can see um, it came out very easily there's no roots showing there's some at the bottom but there's no roots around the sides of it so it's really not root bound at all in any way so I'm just gonna let most of that soil just fall away and I'm gonna refresh it with some of my soil mix so as you can see it's just it's just yeah there is it's kind of chunky, but it needs other bits through it. Whereas this one, it dries out way too quickly because it is in a terracotta pot. 
plus the soil that it's in is not very great quality at all so there we go I'm gonna combine these two and put them together in this one pot here so there I'm not gonna disturb those roots as much as possible I'm gonna try not to disturb those roots got a tiny little bit of soil at the bottom there pop those two in together this will also give me one really really super full lush plant at the top there as you can see look at that then I can allow this to just grow into the pot and get root bound in this one you know what this also does is reduces the amount of plants that I need to water it's kind of condensing my collection kind of thing <laughs> maybe I should do this with more of my plants like condensing them all into one pot so I don't have to water as many <laughs> All right, there we go. Quick and easy repot with this one. Look how pretty that is. I think that's gonna do a lot better now, especially now that it's in much better quality soil and it'll be able to get some even watering throughout. Isn't that pretty? Ah, that's so cute. All right, I'm gonna put it back in here. I'll give it a really good water later on, but that's another job done. One more thing that I've been meaning to do for a while, but like on camera, I've done this to my plants. It's something I regularly do to my plants. Uh, Calathea especially, but to most of my plants I do this, um, but I haven't had a chance to really do it on camera So I talked about this in my top 20 indoor plants questions answered video um, And I talked about I answered the question why do why don't my plants look perfect or why why are there brown spots in my plants and the, the short answer to that question is because you need to clean your plants you need to groom your plants and this is what i need to do with this calathea makoyana so I'm, I'm coming across some issues with the leaves i don't really think it's a lack of humidity because this literally sits right next to the humidifier and i think it might just be the sensitivity of the leaves to just being it's just a calathea it's characteristic of a calathea so I'm trying to put this in the shower more. It's coming across with some very crispy brown edges there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna groom these leaves and we're just gonna take my scissors and cut off those brown edges. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. People think, oh, you know, you know how some people used to come for those who would wear makeup and be like, oh, you're all fake and stuff. Well, like these plants, it's not makeup. It's just taking care of your plants. If you want them to look nice, then you gotta, you gotta groom them. You gotta take care of them. I'm gonna actually take this leaf off altogether because I don't like the look of that one. Um, yeah, and it, you know, it's up to us to groom our plants. They, they can't work out or put makeup on or go to the gym or, you know, uh, cut their hair or anything. It's up to us to take care of them and give them the look that they deserve, give them the facelift that they deserve. So that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> I've been meaning to do this job on camera, but often when I get to caring for my plants, it's really just, um, I'm walking past them and think, oh, that needs a water, so I'll go and do it. Or walking past them, oh, that needs a trim, that needs a, it's dead leaves taken off, that needs a grooming. And I don't often think to just, you know, switch my camera on and do the plant chores right then and there, which is why I thought it was kind of important to make this video so you guys can actually see me do these things in action, you know what I mean? Rather than just sit here and, you know, talk about the plants that are currently looking pretty and... No. I need to show you guys the, the real deal and show, not just show you the, the, the fun parts of it where there's brand new leaves and everything's looking pretty got to show you the real deal where the reality is plants will have brown crispy edges plants will sometimes come out not looking very happy and part of fixing that is just taking it off take off those ugly leaves so yeah there's that oh there's quite a few not very pretty looking leaves on this plant and this was doing a whole lot better when I first got it, it was just like taking off, but now it's kind of stopped growing. So I kind of feel like I need to maybe change the soil that it's sitting in. Even though it's not actually root bound, there's nothing at the bottom indicating to me that it's root bound, but it is very wet. Wow, I just watered this the other day and I clearly did not allow it to drain well enough. That's dripped everywhere and made a bit of a mess. So yeah, I feel like I actually need to repot this. Just the soil isn't terrible, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it's soil. Maybe I need to move it. That's what I've said in one of my previous videos. If it's not doing well where it is, move it. 
move it. So I'm gonna move this plant. I'm gonna move it closer to the window over there. Maybe it doesn't have enough light. That's, that's usually one of the biggest answers. Your plant's not getting enough light or it's not getting the right kind of light. There, I finally did it on camera. Taking off the uglier leaves. Hopefully she starts to pick up a bit. And I think I do need to kind of aerate that soil too. Aeration of the soil is another thing. Like sometimes you need to just go through your plants and if you don't want to use your finger, then use a chopstick or a, or a fork or something and just like aerate the soil. Sometimes the soil in our plants gets really compact from all the watering. It's important to, you know, just kind of cultivate that soil and get it a little bit fluffy and aerate it again. That's something to keep in mind for your plant care. Just go through and poke the soil. Get your finger in there sometimes. <laughs> I'm gonna leave the video there for the day. I had another couple jobs that I wanted to do, but I think I'll save them for other videos, like separate videos. And I don't know how long this one's gonna be because I don't know how much I'm gonna edit it down. I don't know if this video was any fun to watch, but I just wanted to come bring you guys along with me on my plant chores. It was a little bit stressful today getting these things done and then discovering pests, and it definitely threw a spanner in the works when it came to my workflow. But that's okay, this is the reality. I wanted to show this to you guys. Just let you know that you're not alone if you're feeling really overwhelmed with your plants. Sometimes I do, which is why I also, well, besides the fact that they both were sitting in soil that wasn't doing them any good, I wanted to condense this two plants down into one pot just to, just to kind of like condense down my workload because I've just got a lot going on at the moment and I don't want to try and make things a little bit easier for myself from here on out. So I guess that's it for this video. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you've chosen to spend your time here with me today. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy these kinds of videos or if you're like, now nah, just do your plant chores on your own next time. Don't worry about showing us. So let me know. I do want to know if you guys enjoy these kinds of videos. And if you do, I'll keep filming them. If you don't, I'll just do my plant chores on my own. It's all good. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.